My name is Gurusan Singh, and today I'm going to put to rest once and for all this idea that Yogi Bhajan was bestowed the title of the Sri Singh Saab by the Akal Tuckett in the early 1970s. This is a complete lie about a Siri Singh Saab title that Yogi Bhajan made up in order to give himself credibility and to give his tantric and kundalini yoga a platform in order to create this image of superiority. And I'll show in this video how the Yogi Bhajan supporters, the defenders, continue to use this fraudulent title that is a complete fraud on Sikhi to prop up their organization, to prop up their tantric and kuni yoga, and to give themselves power and money at the expense of Sikhi. Now, not only did Yogi Bhajan make up this ridiculous title of Siri Singh Saab, which never existed and never will exist ever in Sikhi, and I'll show you why in this video. Yogi Bhajan took on this uh, position, if you will, of being the head the leader of Sikhi in the Western Hemisphere. It's just a joke, really, because Sikhi has no priests or um, head people like, like a pope or anything. There's no such thing. But Yogi Bhajan took this on himself. It was a, it was a big hoax that he perpetrated in order to give himself an elitist status and to elevate himself to some kind of um, position of power and authority and give himself credibility. All right, so I'm going to uh, reduce this uh, video image of me here, stop it actually, and then expand these documents so you can uh, really see them clearly. First, uh, this uh, article by the Seek Free Press, this is in 2015, really gives the conclusive evidence about how Yogi Bhajan was never bestowed this title of uh, Siri Singh Saab. And just expand this here, zoom in on this. This is a letter from the Jethadar at the time, this Sadhu Singh. And he states here, unequivocally, 1977. Now, this Jethadar, he was a Jethadar at the time that Yogi Bhajan says he was given this title of Siri Singh Sa. So there was no other Jethadar at the time. So this letter is dated 10th October, 1977. The title of Siri Singh Saab or Siri Singh Saab has never been bestowed by me. This is the Sadhu Singh, Jathadar of the Akal Tuckett, saying, has never been bestowed by me to any person since 1965 when I was appointed as Jathadar of Siri Akal Tuckett Saab in Amritsar. Now, you might ask why I'm bringing this up at this time. Gurfatta Singh, who is a longtime Yogi Bhajan supporter and defender, has written a post on the Gurmat Learning Zone that is really, um, it's a lie, is what it is. And uh, that's why I feel it necessary to bring this up at this time. And then also, uh, I'll show you how SeekNet, these other supposed Sikh organizations 
of Yogi Bhajans are continuing to use this title of uh, Siri Singh Saab in order to prop up their now disgraced um, guru or baba, uh, this Yogi Bhajan. Um, I'm sure you all have heard about these um, accounts of sexual abuse by Yogi Bhajan. And so um, the organization and all these people like Sikhnet and uh, the Kundalini Yoga have all been getting a lot of heat. And rightly they should be because Yogi Bhajan was, as we've seen now, was a complete fraud. He's a pathological liar. And um, now he's been shown to be a sexual predator. So this Gurfatta Singh is really trying to um, do everything he can to prop up Yogi Bhajan's image. He's created this new website um, showing supposedly this history of Yogi Bhajan and how um, he was given all these titles by the occult Taket and all these things. So um, <laughs> uh, here's the letter. He says here that, um, first he says, all hail city sing stop, um, <laughs> which is just complete aggrandizement. And uh, anyway, so then um, he says here, he says, some good substantial material that appears to prove once and for all the reality of this recent sub, blah, 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 um, in Surya Amatsar and the SGPC. All right, so let's go through uh, Rafata Singh's supposed proof. And um, well, first, I want to show you here how SikhNet and the other Yogi Bhajan organizations uh, continue to use the Sri Singh Sab title and say that he is the head of um, the uh, Sikh religion in the Western Hemisphere. And this gives SikhNet and these other organizations the, the, that are uh, uh, were initiated by Yogi Bhajan, it gives them credibility. It gives them a certain um, status in the Sikh community if they can say, oh, they, the Yogi Bhajan was the head of the Sikh religion. And uh, it, it, it puts um, Yogi Bhajan's teachings, it puts his uh, image at a higher level than um, normal or regular Sikhs. That's their idea, Sikh Nat's idea. That's Sikh Dharma's, this Yogi Bhajan organization's idea. That if they can prop up this image of Yogi Bhajan and uh, purportedly show that he was something special or something where he was a priest of the Sikh religion or some you know, completely um, unheard of uh, position before uh, he came around, that they all of his teachings are, are the same way, that they are above the teachings of normal Sikh scholars or no, normal, normal Sikhs for that matter. So that's their agenda, is to uh, continue to um, prop up this image of Yogi Bhajan. And with all of these accusations and accounts of sexual abuse, and the, um, there's been studies now by this Philip Dislep, who's a um, scholar and um, a, uh, a doctoral candidate and professor over at um, uh, UC Santa Barbara, I believe it is. He has written some really good papers and uh, given some talks about how Yogi Bhajan uh, just made up a lot of these uh, teachings of his and that they're completely um, against uh, Sikh teachings, have nothing to do with uh, traditional Sikhs and Sikh values and, and all of that. Um, there's so much material now that shows Yogi Bhajan was a fraud um, that it's really conclusive uh, that he lied and he uh, promoted this twisted form of Sikhi uh, for his own ends, basically. So here's another example of how uh, you see here a Yogi Bhajan's wife and her mustic and um, how they've been uh, uh, shown here. This is some uh, Sikh Dharma International represented in the Sikh 100. This was just a couple of weeks ago. 
And they still re refer to Yogi Bhajan as the city sing song. And like I said, there's a reason for that. This gives them credibility. This gives them a higher status, um, an elitist position in the uh, C community if they can continue to um, uh, promote this idea that Yogi Bhajan was something special and that his teachings were something special. They've all signed on to an agreement to teach the Sikh religion as taught by, by Yogi Bhajan. All of these organizations, all of these people within the Yogi Bhajan community. So they have a vested interest in continuing this um, false narrative that Yogi Bhajan was somehow special, that he was above, he was some kind of uh, high priest, if you will, or pope of uh, Sikhi. Uh, Sikhi does not have any popes for that matter. Well, let's get uh, into this uh, so-called uh, proof of uh, Gurfatta Singh. So Gurfatta Singh has produced this letter from this uh, Hukam Singh, who is the secretary of uh, the SJPC back then at the time and this Gurcharan Singh, Torah. Um, and they stayed in this letter about how Yogi Bhajan they said here, uh, the SGPC appreciated the work done by 3HO and the Akal Tuckett, decorated the leader as Siri Singh Sabha Rajan Singh Yogi, and recognized him as a head of the Sikh Dharma mission in the Western Hemisphere. Now, this is a letter, okay? Um, it's not any kind of hukam nama from the Akal Tuckett. It is a letter from these two individuals, signed by these two individuals, and nothing is from the Akal Tuckett which is the um, supreme authority of the Sikh religion. Uh, the SGPC is just a political wing. And uh, these guys here, um, I know they took bribes. Um, I know somebody who's very uh, connected uh, with the Akal Tuckett and the SGPC. And um, he has told me that they took bribes. And Yogi Bhajan it was the biggest, um, uh, if you will, tipper if you, of them all, uh, giving these what's called tips or bribes or whatever you want to call them. Um, these guys were known for taking bribes. Um, Yogi Bhajan himself was a customs officer uh, before he got involved in uh, supposedly teaching uh, yoga and, and uh got this fake title of Siri Singh Saab. He was a customs officer in India and everybody knows the customs officers in India were the biggest um, uh, taker of bribes there are. Um, he was a master in giving, giving bribes and taking them. Um, so he had these two guys in his pocket. So it, it definitely goes to show um, that it definitely goes to the point that um, they were just signing on to whatever Yogi Bhajan would give them uh, or tell them. So let's go to some more of these um, letters from the SGPC. Again, this is another letter showing this title, uh, this fake title of Yogi Bhajan's the Siri Singh Saab, and it's again only signed by Mahinder, Mahinder Singh. Now here is an interesting letter. Um, Oh, now, actually, this is another one just signed, you know, giving, addressing it to um, uh, Yogi Bhajan, calling him the Sri Singh Sab. And this is, again, uh, from one of these SGPC people. Um, so this is an interesting letter here. Um, this is from uh, Mahinder Singh again. Um, you can see he has given approval to the constitution of Yogi Bhajan's Sikh Dharma Brotherhood. Uh, this is uh, from 1976. And it states here, I'm pleased to inform you that the executive committee of the SGPC um, has approved the condition of Sikh Dharma Brotherhood. And so um, the constitution here is all written out. And I want to point out here how they've approved this symbol of the Sikh Dharma. And, it, and 
they say should be the Adi Shakti. They say is a mystical symbol of infinity. Two sided, two side swords represent the protection of God. The control wheel at, on the tip of the double edged sword represents the law of karma and the universe. Well, this is all Yogi Bhajan nonsense. Um, what they're referring to here is nothing more than the Sikh Kanda. And the Sikh Kanda was a fairly modern uh, symbol. Um, only, I believe, only maybe 150 years old or so. Um, so it has nothing to do with Shaktis and Shiv Shaktis and all this occult um, nonsense of Yogi Bhajans. Um, and I'll show you here how Yogi Bhajan has used this um, occult ideas and, and symbolism in order to suck in these gullible Americans, um, like myself one time. And uh, it wasn't until 2009 or so that I started meeting and talking to uh, traditional Sikhs um, that I realized Yogi Bhajan was just coming up with all of this magical thinking in order to suck us in to his cult, um, his Shiv Shakti cult. I, I believe Yogi Bhajan was really interested in subsuming Sikhi into his Shiv Shakti cult. Um, that's my belief after reading a lot of material and from my own experience and, and uh, being around Yogi Bhajan for some 30 years or so. So my point of this is, is that um, if Mahinder Singh had known, or the SGPC body, which is, like I say, a political wing, had known anything about um, Sikhi, they would know that this, this quote, Adi Shakti uh, supposed mystical symbol uh, was nothing more than the Kanda. And it's really a sacrilegious use of the Kanda that Yogi Bhajan has done. He's put this um, in pictures I'll show you a little later, he's put this um, uh, Catholic Virgin Mary in the middle of it and then put the Sikh guru gurus around it like a rosary. It's really um, very disturbing and, and alarming that this Mahinder Singh uh, would not see um, what Yogi Bhajan was doing. And that shows me that he knew nothing about Sikhi, Mahinder Singh. He was just following uh, Yogi Bhajan's pocketbook is what he was doing and the dollars that Yogi Bhajan was giving to them uh, in order to prop up his uh, fake um, titles and all that. Now, here you can see the Sikh Kanda um, and the Yogi Bhajans have appropriated this and they call it the Adi Shakti and they're doing gong pujas there. This is from a flyer in Mexico uh, from a while back. Um, so, uh, this shows how Yogi Bhajan um, had his own tantric and kundalini yoga agenda. Um, and he was just using this Mahinder Singh and this um, Kucharan Singh Torah um, for his own purposes. Now, you also might remember um, that this Kucharan Singh Torah was the uh, first one to come up and, and uh, surrender to the Indian army when the Dabar Sahib was. Uh, attacked in 1984 uh, by the Indian army. Uh, Gurcharan Singh came with his arms raised up and was um, begging them to uh, uh, accept his surrender um, there in, in, at the Akal Tucket. Uh, so it's shameful how he was um, just um, succumbing to the Indian army. Now you can see here um, how, again, I talked about how Yogi Bhajan and and now even the three HO people and Sikhnet included um, have appropriated this Sikh kanda. You can see um, this uh, kanda here in the middle, and they've got this Virgin uh, Mary, Catholic Virgin Mary, in the center there, and uh, how she's adorning this, and then they have the Sikh gurus. Um, here around it like a rosary and then they've got yogi bhajan here on one side on an even level with supposedly guru ramdas here uh this is a mural by the way that is at the Sikhnet headquarters there in espanola new mexico um it's uh disgraceful and sacrilegious how these three ho people continue to um 
use this mural um, in the Gurdwara there in the Dabar of the city of Granth Sabji as a symbol. As they, they put lights on it. They put it as a place of reverence and um, uh, they meditate there in front of it. Um, and uh, it's it, it needs to be taken down if they are ever going to become uh, part of the uh, Sikh community. Um, you can see here this uh, these two uh, Hindu uh, goddesses up here in the top. Uh, I think this is um, uh, Chand Chandri, uh, and um, not sure who this other one is here. But anyway, you can see here how they're different gods, Hindu gods here. Um, Yogi Bhajan was hit, like I said, his agenda was really to um, twist Sikhi, to destroy Sikhi, and subsume it into his tantric and kundalini yoga uh, agenda. And um, uh, this is still promoted, again, by Sikh Ned and the 3HO people and, and the Yogi Bhajan Sikh Dharma in order, like I said, to give them some kind of status um, in the community there. So here is more of the proof of this um, uh, twisting of Sikhi by, by Yogi Bhajan. Uh, you can see here how, um, they, like I said, they meditate, the three HO people meditate in front of this uh, mural. It's at the inside the Gurdwara right there. And, and the Sikh net headquarters are just right around the uh, corner there. Um, and uh, you can see Yogi Bhajan's tantric photo here is up on the wall. And the city of Grand Sabji is just um, uh, in Prakash. Um, and uh, uh, it should, this should not be like this. This is not a proper way to have a, um, the Dabar city Gurdwara he set up. You can see here, um, Gurmastik here uh, meditating underneath this um, sacrilegious mural. Um, he's there with the orange uh, the star on. He's the CEO of Seeknet. So again, they use this um, uh, idea of the Shakti, um, Shiv Shakti concepts in order to try to give themselves an elevated status um, and to give them some kind of mystical powers, they they think. And that the main thing is, is it gives other people this image that they have mystical powers. They also worship this uh, Baba Sirichan. Um, this uh, idol or Murti is right outside at the entrance to their Gurdwara there in Espanola. Um, and uh, it's all part of this Shiv Shakti worship um, that Yogi Bhajan promoted. And this disgracefully, this Mahindra Singh and this Gurcharan Singh Torah, they, they um, uh, went along with, no doubt, because Yogi Bhajan was paying them and bribing them. So you can see here, this is from the book, uh, Sikhism and Tantric Yoga by Dr. Shaloshan Singh. And um, it gives these symbols, uh, the Kanda, and then Yogi Bhajan's interpretation of it, um, sacrilegious interpretation, as he calls it. This is another sacrilegious misuse of the verse 94 and 95, the Jap of Guru Gobind Singh Ji, in praise of Goddess Chandi. And as I mentioned, that, that Goddess Chandi is in that, in that mural there. And um, the reason I bring this up is because, again, this concept of the Adi Shakti was really important to Yogi Bhajan and still to his followers. And um, so uh, Dr. Chaloshan Singh, uh, again, he was a really eloquent Sikh scholar and historian. And he wrote the Sikhism and Tantric Yoga, which I'll encourage you all to read. Um, you can download it from my website, it's free. And um, it gives a lot of good insights into how Yogi Bhajan twisted the Sikh religion for his own purposes. Uh, I was really um, 
Well, my eyes were completely opened when I first read this book in 2009 or so. And uh, it so impressed me and so um, shook my um, belief in Yogi Bhajan that, that I, um, I had to uh, sit down with a text editor and take from the original and put it all into um, this um, uh, PDF form so that everybody could read it. And I put it on my website. Uh, there's also a new um, edition that it, Dr. Jalosh Singh's son is printed now. Um, so that's available as well uh, through, through him. So uh, Dr. Lochan Singh uh, says here, he says, Adi Shakti to him, meaning to Yogi Bhajan and his followers, means Chandi, whose picture is worshipped in the ashram and is placed side by side with those of the Sikh Gurus. And as I mentioned in that mural, it's side by side with the Sikh Gurus. This Devi is praised and glorified with what Yogi Bhajan calls Mahashakta, Mahashakti or Mahatantra Ashtang Mantra. This Ashtang Mantra or Mahashakti Mantra is nothing but verse 94 and 95 of Guru Gobind Singh Ji's Chop, which were written by Guru Gobind Singh in praise of Supreme Being and not in praise of Chandi as alleged by Yogi Bhajan and taught to his American followers as Chandi. Now, again, this shows that this Mahinder Singh and Gurcharan Singh knew nothing about Sikhi because they never would have approved this constitution of uh, Yogi Bhajan Sikh Dharma if they'd known um, just how um, twisted Yogi Bhajan's uh, concepts of uh, Sikhi were. He, he was just completely um, trying to um, destroy Sikhi. So here's this other. Um, this is a graphic, another graphic from Dr. Sloj Singh's book. Uh, this showing the um, uh, Chandi. Uh, this is a tantric deity, Chandi, Shakti Chandi. And you can see her pictured here with this uh, kanda on top of her forehead here. Uh, this is from um, Yogi Bhajan's Bead of Truth, 1972. Dr. Shalosh Singh goes on to say, Yogi Bhajan and his followers as taught by him unashamedly use these verses as a shtang mantra to glorify Chandi, which is an insult to Guru Gobind Singh and his morning prayer, which is also one of the prayers used in baptism ceremony. In the first verse of Jap Sab, Guru Gobind Singh is very clear that the whole of Jap is in, in praise of the almighty and infinite God and a refudiation of any belief in gods and goddesses. Guru Gobind Singh's job says, marks and symbols, cast and class or lineage, God hath none. His form and hue, shape and garb cannot be described by anyone. Immovable is his being, self-luminous. He shines in his splendor. Luminous is his power. He is the king of kings, the lordly Indra of countless Indras, the supreme sovereign of the three worlds of gods, men and demons. Nay, even the grass blades of the woodlands say, he is infinite, he is infinite, O Lord, who can count thy names, thy names related, thy deeds I will state through thy wisdom and grace. Guru Gobind Singh. So Yogi Bhajan worshiped all these gods and goddesses. Um, and he put this, implanted this uh, idea, this narrative into the um, heads of these Yogi Bhajan followers. And to this day, they continue to do this. Guru Gobind Singh clearly states that he is relating the names of the infinite and supreme being, and, Yo and Yogi Bhajan has arbitrarily picked up verses 94 and 95 out of this composition of 199 verses and presented them as a Shtang mantra or Mahashakti mantra in praise of the goddess Chandi. The fact that Yogi Bhajan can be unscrupulous enough you know, to do such a thing is no surprise to me. But what surprises me is that the Jethadar of the Akal Tukat and the SGPC executive have been misled by by the Hukam Singh Gurcharan Singh Torah. Okay, so again, these this Hukam Singh Gurcharan Singh Torah uh, and Mahinder Singh uh, click to give, as it is alleged by him, the title of Sri Singh Sabji Yogi Bhajan, about which we have to say much more in subsequent chapters. 
So Dr. Lochensing talked about this many years ago. This book was written in 1977. And, um, you know, he, he talks about how corrupt these SGPC political wing people are. It says, in figure four, the reader can see Yogi Bhajan's version of the call insignia. This was printed by him in Beads of Truth, Winter Solstice, 1973, both on the title page and page five. The double-edged sword of the call insignia has been replaced by a picture of a beautiful American woman wearing Indian sari and robes. Well, he didn't realize, but it actually the Catholic uh, Virgin Mary. Yogi Bhajan's obsession with women is singular. He wishes to impose sex on women, even where it is a sacrilegious act to do so. This is a typical instance. This picture also takes a place of pride in the 3HO ashram. He calls it the jantra of his goddess Bhagavati Chandi. He says on page five of this issue, her jantra defined in the footnote as mandala or the picture representing the mantra is the two sources of God pro protracting you. The center of the world, it rolls on a two-edged sword of the being, the meditation and positivity, Bhagavati, the Shakti, all Shaktis, the infinity, and even man and every mantra must have a jantra, and is, this is her jantra. Of course, this is all nonsense and against seeking, but this is what Yogi Bhajan taught. And I think it's very interesting how Yogi Bhajan now has been uh, deemed to be a sexual predator, that he abused his uh, students, and um, now all of this is coming out. And, and it, it shows, um, it makes sense that uh, he was this, Shakti, Shiv Shakti worshiper, Yogi Bhajan, and <clears throat> he imposed these sex and women on, on all of these mantras and jantras and, and his meditations and his tantric yoga, to say the least, was all about um, uh, this, you know, uh, using this sex energy for um, spiritual purposes and all that. It's all coming out now, how that's all tied in and related. So Yogi Bhajan uh, says, that is her being. These are her feathers, he says. The editors in the footnote on page five make it clear that these are, for them, the inspired words of Yogi Bhajan. So uh, Yogi's speech is given alongside in which he says, I am told 75,000 people in Los Angeles alone, you know, who do not know how to relate to a woman period. And there are an equal number of women who do not know how to relate to a man. I have great sympathy for perversion. When somebody hates woman, I know it is the total solid mountain of frustration. When one hates to relate, then he becomes totally angry and cannot relate. So <laughs> it's so ironic. The Yogi Bhajan says here um, that people hate women or that other people hate women when he was the hater of women. He abused women. It's been shown conclusively now um, through this AOB report. The Yogi Bhajan abused women and um, uh, he even has, there is even uh, quotes by Yogi Bhajan now how um, he, he leaves, you know, rape as being all the woman's fault. For Yogi Bhajan, the Kalsa symbol is now a jantra. This is, uh, again, um, Dr. Talosian is speaking. For Yogi Bhajan, the Kalsa symbol is now a jantra of his goddess Bhagavati, that is Chandi, and it, he unashamedly connects it with women and sex, with lust and perversion. These mahatantric and perverted interpretations and distortions of the cults of symbols may suit Yogi Bhajan dollar catching postures, but it is the worst and most shameful condemn condemnation of the ideals and principles of Guru Gobind Singh Ji. This tantric cult adopted as a bait to American craze for the miraculous and sensational is the antithesis of Sikhism and condemned throughout the Sikh scriptures as Sakta Mat, created the Shakti cult. So Yogi Bhajan was promoted this Shakti cult. And now, like I said, it's all coming out how Yogi Bhajan and his uh, top leaders were really involved in this abuse of women and sexual, being sexual predators. Sikhs are asked by the gurus in Adi Granth not to associate with such people and to run away from the very evil sight of people who think and act like that. It is a standing shame to the whole Sikh community that all this tantric nonsense is being poured down the throat of innocent American seekers of truth in the name of Sikhism. And this is being done by him after assuming the titles of Sri Singh Sab and acknowledged authority of the Sikhs in the Western Hemisphere. So Dr. Sloch Singh really 
uh, goes into this, and I definitely recommend you all read his book. I'll put a link to it in the uh, description of this video. Dr. Larson goes on to say, um, corrupt secretary of SGPC, Mahinder Singh. I can imagine Mahinder Singh and his SGPC bosses who do not know a word of English accepting everything they are shown and given in print and blindly compromising, overlooking all the unseek like Shakti cult tantra practices. But I find it hard to believe that Sardar Inderjit Singh and Sant Ramuk Singh should rally behind these people and, and their anti-Sikh practices. So again, Dr. Singh saw this in 1977, how the uh, SGPC was completely corrupt. And they were, they were deluded um, by this image and fooled by Yogi Bhajan that he, Yogi Bhajan had brought hundreds of thousands of people into uh, Sikhi from the West. Um, they wanted to have this feather in their turbans, if you will, um, that, that they had been uh, part of this um, uh, uh, proselytizing, if you will, of Sikhi that Yogi Bhajan was carrying on in the West and that he had brought you know, hundreds of thousands of um, new converts into the Sikh religion. It was completely a um, hoax. Uh, there were maybe at the most two, two to 3,000 people that uh, converted to Sikhi, but they were converting to Yogi Bhajan Sikhi. That's the important thing um, to realize. And Yogi Bhajan was doing all of this damage. It wasn't until, you know, Yogi Bhajan, long after Yogi Bhajan died and I started to meet real Sikhs that I even heard about his Sikh were at Marietta and, and um, you know, heard about these real concepts of Sikhi um, about, you know, worshiping one God and, and uh, Yogi Bhajan had us doing all these, you know, completely uh, anti-Sikh practices like uh, doing these Hindu mantras and, and um, pujas. And uh, uh, it's just, I, I'm just really angry at Yogi Bhajan and, and also his, um, you know, high up leaders that uh, led me astray and that led many, many people astray. And you see the damage that's doing now that you know, Yogi Bhajan has been found to be a sexual predator. A lot of these uh, younger um, uh, people that came into Sikhi um, as children uh, in Yogi Bhajan's group are leaving. They're cutting their hair and they're they're just completely throwing out anything Yogi Bhajan um, uh, said, including uh, Sikhi. So you can see, you know, a lot of people say, oh, Yogi Bhajan did a lot of good, but he he did more damage than good. There's no question about it. Okay, in conclusion, um, Dr. Solution Singh says, my visit to the 3HO headquarters, even though a guided tour revealed one, that the inner working of Yogi Bhajan's multi-faced organization has as its core, Durga, Adi Shakti worship. It has, it has its own Shakti and Shakti man theories, which are revealed in the light of Sikhism. Yogi Bhajan has made sacrilegious use of the hymns of Guru Gobind Singh Ji, Guru Gobind Singh Ji's chop, and he has given a sacrilegious interpretation of this call said signa, the khanda. All these errors are revealed in the light of factual truth about Sikh, about them in Sikh theology and mysticism. Again, if this uh, Hukam Singh and the other, uh, Mahinder Singh and these other SGPC leaders had known anything about Sikh, they never would have signed the constitution uh, or approved it. You can see here this close-up of the mural again, where you can see that uh, Chandi riding on a tiger. And this is just right in this mural here with the um, uh, Sikh Kanda and the Sikh Gurus. It's ab above the Sikh Gurus. It's placed above the Sikh Gurus there. You can see an image of Guru Gobind Singh Ji and they placed it in this mural. And again, this mural is right in, their, in the Dabar of Siddhi Guru Granth Sahib Ji, um, in Espanol in New Mexico, um, just on the opposite wa wall from the headquarters of Sikhnat. And again, here's, here's a letter from um, uh, Hukam Singh, and uh, he addresses Yogi Bhajan as Sri Singh Saab. Um, these are proofs, so-called proofs, that Gurfatta Singh gives in his um, website. And again, here's... Um, this letter from 
uh, Sadhu Singh, who was Jathadar at the time. This is he was Jathadar from 1965 until uh, 1977 or so, and he says that he never gave any title. The title of the Sri Singh Sab or Sri Singh Sab has never been bestowed by me. He says this is all published in this uh, really great article um, by um, Anjukar at the um, Seek Free Press. Now. Um, I want to read a post I made so that I don't miss anything about some of the other reasons why I feel this, uh, well, I know, <laughs> uh, I know conclusively, and I can show you conclusively why this title of this recent song was just made up. Uh, first of all, Gurfatta Singh Khalsa, a longtime ardent Yogi Bhajan supporter, has posted a defense on the Gurmurt Mutt learning zone of the Sri Sansab title as used by Yogi Bhajan. Uh, and you may read Guru Fatta Singh's entire post below. And one of the screenshots here is, is also the link. And he, gives, he says he gives substantive material that appears to prove once and for all the reality of the title Sri Sansab and its origins and support in Sri Amritsar within the SGPC. And I'll give a link to this in the um, description of this video. So my response is as follows. Allow me to lay out all the reasons why there never was, is, or will be a title of Siri Sinsab or any title of that nature other than in the perception of Guru Fatta Singh Khalsa and the other Yogi Bhajan defenders. This whole thing was a great hoax that was perpetrated by Yogi Bhajan. Of course, it's hard to prove a negative. That is why I invite Guru Fatta Singh Khalsa or any other Yogi Bhajan supporter to prove that the Siri Singh Saab title was awarded by either the Akal Tucket or the SGPC. If they are able to post a proclamation or similar document here on this website stating that the Siri Singh Saab title was awarded to Yogi Bhajan, I will be the first to admit I am mistaken. Letters addressed to YB or Yogi Bhajan do not count. I am well aware that even for Charan Singh Tora, in spite of his denial that the title was ever given, took to addressing YB. Yogi Bhajan as Sri Singh Sab in the last years of his life. So I've shown these letters that were from uh, the secretary of the SGPC and um, this Gracharan Singh Tora, but those don't count. Those are just letters and they're addressing him that way, but it's not a proclamation and it's not a hukam nama. And it's certainly not from the Akal Tucket. These are the, my reasons why I think and I'm speaking again here. These are my reasons why I think this was contrived title, the Sri Singh Sab title. Number one, the Hukam Nama issued by Sadhu Singh Bora, Jathadar of the Akal Tuckan in 1977, which states, the title of Sri Singh Sab of, or Sri Singh Sab has never been, Singh Sab or Sri Singh Sab has never been bestowed by me to any person since 1965 when I was appointed Jathadar Sri Akal Tuckan Sab Amritsar. I have attached, and I'm speaking again, I have attached a screenshot of the letter below. Um, I put it, you're looking at it right now. Jethra Sadhu Singh Bora was the person who, if the title had actually been issued in 1979, would have been the one doing it. This was all explained in an article by Andrew Carr at the Sikh Free Press. American yogis distort Sikh scriptures. And I'll put a link to this in the description of this video. Anju Kar also published in the, this article a Punjabi press clipping showing that Jathadar Sadhu Singh was intending to excommunicate Yogi Bhajan from the Khalsa Pan for teaching tantric yoga, et cetera. No doubt um, Jathadar Sadhu Singh had seen uh, Yogi, or this Dr. Lord Singh's book, and knew about all of these Shiv Shakti practices and worships and tantric yogas and uh, God, uh, was all of these um, occult and, and um, uh, mystical, ridiculous things Yogi Bhajan was teaching and trying to suck in his followers. No, do no doubt, um, Jathadar uh, Sadhu Singh had seen this and he was ready to um, excommunicate um, Yogi Bhajan from the Khalsa Panth. 
Um, interestingly, he was um, removed from this post just shortly after he he um, gave this interview and for this uh, newspaper um, article where he said he was just getting ready to excommunicate him. The political arm of the um, SGPC, I'm sure they, when they heard about his intention to excommunicate Yogi Bhajan, they got rid of him. Because again, Yogi Bhajan was paying these people off in the SGPC. I have attached the, that press article below as well. And I think you can see it here. I think I've got it here. This is the press article here. Okay, this is the press article in Punjabi. This is in the Daily Akali newspaper. Yogi Bhajan, and this is what uh, Sadhu Singh uh, Border says, Yogi Bhajan will be excommunicated from the Sikh Panth. Uh, claim, the claim of converting 200,000 Singhs is wrong. Jethro Baru, uh, Amritsar, 10 January. Special representative reporter, city of Kal Tukat Sabs, Jethadar, Sadhu Singh Baru, G, said here today that Yogi Bhajan, Yogi Har Bhajan, having called himself Singh Sab, is wrong. He said he sent a registered letter asking Yogi Bhajan on what authority has he made himself Siri Singh Sab. He said, he said questions raised in this letter and the related Hukam Nam in 1977 have not yet been responded by to by Yogi Bhajan. Yogi Bhajan never did respond. Jethro Baru said he will wait a few days and after that he will give one month's notice to Yogi Bhajan if he does not reply. Then he will be excommunicated from the Sikh Pun. Jethro Baru said, Yogi is exploiting Sikhs in the name of Sikhi and making owls, fools of innocent Americans. So calling somebody an owl in Punjabi is really um, derogatory. Um, in the West, we think of owls as being wise, but in India and in Punjab, owls are uh, looked at as being completely foolish and have no brains at all. Um, making owls of innocent Americans. He said that the yogis claim that he has created 200,000 Singhs is wrong. He said that the actual numbers are 1,500 up to 2,000. He said Sikhi is based on principles, not on beard and long hair alone. There was an, also another letter sent by the Akal Tucket to Yogi Bhajan in 1979, attached. And let's look at those. Here's these letters. Uh, where the Akal Tucket warned Yogi Bhajan not to use Siri Singh Saab title or issue any Hukumnama, or he would be excommunicated from the pump. You can read this here. And again, these are all reasons why this is totally a fake title. Yogi Bhajan was a pathological liar. Okay, this is me speaking now again. It has been shown on the wacko world of Yogi Bhajan time and time again the Yogi Bhajan told many, many lies. Now that Yogi, Wacko World of Yogi Bhajan was a website that was set up back in 2000 or so. And a lot of ex-followers of Yogi Bhajan who came to see how Yogi Bhajan was a pathological liar and that he lied about many things posted there. And this was one of the groups that I first joined uh, back in 2009 or so, maybe 11 years ago, where I started to wake up to this fact that Yogi Bhajan was an abuser, he was a pathological liar, and um, uh, he just an all-around bad guy who just was interested in um, aggrandizing himself and living a luxurious lifestyle. So he really took us. Yogi Bhajan, time and time again, that Yogi Bhajan told many, many lies. He was especially prone to lie about his achievements and qualifications. Let us look at some of the more egregious examples. He, Yogi Bhajan, led his village out of Pakistan during the time of partition. That's what Yogi Bhajan claims. Well, not according to Yogi Bhajan's own father. Upon leaving India in 1972, before he was exposed to Yogi Bhajan's revised life history, 
Papaji, that was Yogi Bhajan's uh, father, told how Yogi Bhajan was actually at the rear of the village column, helping his mother who was falling further and further behind. Eventually, he ran to the head of the column and pointed a gun at the man who actually was the actual leader of the group. The young Yogi Bhajan then threatened to shoot him if something was not done about his mother's plight. This shows his determined nature, but does not match the legend as told by Yogi Bhajan himself. He, Yogi Bhajan, was a master of Kalini Yoga at the age of 16. This is what Yogi Bhajan claims. In the very first interview that Yogi Bhajan gave after coming to Canada, the interviewer asked him how old he was when he started practicing yoga. Yogi Bhajan said that he was 18. So either he was lying then, or he was, or he has been lying all for all these years about being a 16-year-old master of Kundalini Yoga. I know which one I think is more likely. By the way, here's this. This is the next. Um, this is another uh, letter from. Um, the occult tucket, um, how he's misusing his uh, title. Okay, so uh, Yogi Bhajan claims he has a PhD. It's true, of course, that Yogi Bhajan was given a PhD by some diploma mill in Northern California. It's also common knowledge that his thesis was written by MSS Gurcharan Singh, that was one of his longtime disciples, who is a, uh, uh, has a PhD himself. This was perhaps not a direct lie, but certainly dishonest and probably illegal. We could go on about the Mahan Tantric, Lama Liman Po, this whole lie made up about the succession of Lama Liman Po uh, being the um, Mahan Tantric, and lies about Yogi Bhajan's form of Kundalini Yoga being an ancient secret. Now, um, again, Philip Dislap has written a very well um, documented and researched article called, Maha, called Maharaj de Mahan Tantra. And I, I uh, encourage all of you to read that. And he's also um, made several videos lately since all of these uh, accounts of sexual abuse and uh, financial abuse have been coming out about Yogi Bhajan and how he used people. Um, I'll put links to these videos that Philip Dislap has made and also his uh, research paper, this Maharaj Ma Tantric, so you can read uh, all the documentation about how Yogi Bhajan was falsifying his qualifications and how he um, made up all this Tantric yoga. The point is that we are looking at someone, speaking about Yogi Bhajan, who seemed to have no hesitation in falsifying qualifications in order to make him appear grander to the world. There is no historical precedent in Sikhi for the Siri Singh Sab title. It is well known that there is no clergy in Sikhi. There are grantees, but these are not ministers. Yogi Bhajan always said that he wanted to create ministers to give legal standing to his nonprofit corporations, and so that marriages performed by Sikh Dharma ministers would be legal. This is fair enough, but it, but, it is, but it does not alter the fact that all titles that he gave are without precedent in Sikhi, Sikh history and SRM, the Sikh Rat Mariata, and therefore not representative Sikhi. It is true that the Jethars of the Five Tuckets are given the title Singh Sab. And as I will show later, I believe that Yogi Bhajan was also given the title. But the idea of one person, male or female, having absolute authority over any group of Sikhs is unprecedented in Sikhi since the demise of Guru Gobind Singh Ji. That is why I believe, had there ever been any discussion amongst the SGPC over the Siri Singh Sab title, it would have been soundly rejected. Of course, in various, various there is the Sant or Baba holds supreme authority. And that is what 3HO slash Sikh Dharma was doing, was, was during Yogi Bhajan's lifetime, a Dara. So there's a lot of these Babas out there. There's a, 
10,000 or more Babas out there. And Yogi Bhajan is nothing special. He's nothing beyond that, just another Baba. That's basically what it is. I talk about in my book, Confessions of an American Sikh, how um, when I got to India, I realized that there was 10,000 Yogi Bhajans out there. And uh, uh, so when SikhNet and all these Yogi Bhajan peoples prop Yogi Bhajan up as being something special by using this fake Siri Singh Saab title or this fake idea that he was the head of the Sikh religion in the Western Hemisphere, um, they're just doing that in order to boast their credibility, to boast their standing and status in the community so they can get more dollars, so they can get you to donate more dollars to them and get them um, uh, thinking that you have that they have some secret, some secret mantras, some secret way to live their lives that um, makes them special and makes them happier, makes them holier. Whether it still is now is debatable and not really germane to the discussion, whether he's treated like a Baba. I think he is. Um, I will add some material from Dr. Lord Singh's book, Sikhism and Dr. Yoga, to add clarity to this issue. There's no such ecclesiastical title as Surya Singh Saab and others ridiculously created by Yogi Bhajan, such as Mukhya Singh Saab and Kalsa. The head priest of Golden Temple and the Jethros of the Four Tuckets are called Singh Saab without the prefix Siri only as long as they are serving these institutions. Gyani Bhupender Singh was called Singh Saab as long as he was head Granti of the Golden Temple, about 12 years. And when he entered politics, he is simply called Gyani Bhupender Singh and never Singh Saab. When any person is installed as head priest or Jethro of, of Tuckett, there is a special ceremony performed for it. No such ceremony was performed for Yogi Bhajan. No Singh Saab can be called a Yogi or by half name as Bhajan signs himself, nor can he ever put any other surname except Singh. There cannot be a Singh Saab without the suffix Singh as the final surname. Only such a theologian or a learned man can be installed as Singh Saab who can interpret Adi Granth, Bhai Gurdas, Suraj Prakash, and they have to deliver sermons on the basis of their the interpretations of these works every day. Yogi Bhajan cannot even read correctly or interpret any 30 pages of this, these voluminous works, nor does he keep Rahet, the essential Sikh code of conduct, as the Khalsa should do. I never saw Yogi Bhajan ever wear a kirpan. Um, and uh, he would wear all these holy robes and everything. He practiced these Hindu pujas and everything. He violated the Sikh Mariotic constantly. So he, he didn't even deserve any kind of title like Singh Saab or anything like that. It was only because these SGPC people were in the pockets of Yogi Bhajan um, and Yogi Bhajan controlled them through his um, money that he got from these um, really naive Americans like myself. On the other hand, uh, he, Yogi Bhajan, has installed more Singh Saabs among his followers than have, have been created in 200 years of the history of Amritsar. Everyone who becomes his follower is given the certificate and title of Khalsa. Khalsa is not a title that can be doled out as Yogi Bhajan is doing to his tantric disciples. The denials, okay, so this is so true. And this is why this book of Dr. Lush Singh was such an eye opener to me. Uh, so number five, the denials that the title was get, ever given first by, the S, by an SGPC member and then is its president. From Dr. Klochini's book, Sikhism and Tantric Yoga, I met a very prominent sitting member of SGPC who was touring the USA and Canada for an undeclared mission. I showed him all the documents quoted in this chapter and asked him uh, how on earth could the SGPC do such an absurd thing? He admitted that the SGPC being composed of more politicians than religious men has in the past committed some serious errors which when pointed out by theologians and scholars have been corrected. But as he had attended all the meetings in 1970, 1974, no such title was ever sanctioned by the SGPC executive. My emphasis at all SGPC resolutions are published in Gurdwara Gazette. A robe of honor was given to Yogi Bhajan in 1974 on the recommendation of, of President Torah. But a robe of honor does not carry any title with it nor does it give authority of any kind. 
All right, so there you have it. You know, I met with this SGPC member. Uh, they told me that SGPC had made serious mistakes with their political uh, wing of, uh, and they they don't know religious matters. And so it makes sense that this Mahinder Singh, Hukam Singh, this Gurchan Tara was the president of the SGPC. They signed off on this title of Yogi Bhajan's and made in this head of the Western Hemisphere, but that's not the occult tucket. That's not an official proclamation that gave Yogi Bhajan any kind of titles. Okay, so if Yogi Bhajan had been made any such chief of the Western Sikhs in 1971, then a realm of honor in 1974 was meaningless. As I've re recently posted in a 1977 Time Magazine article, it is stated, High Priest Gurcharan Singh Tora, President of the Management Committee for Northern India's Sikh temples, confirms that his council has given full approval to 3HO and recognizes the yogi as a preacher. Tora, however, says that this does not mean that Bhajan is the Sikh leader of the Western Hemisphere, as he claims. The Sikhs do not create such offices, nor, nor Tora adds, has the committee given Bhajan the rarely bestowed title, Sri Singh Saab, which he uses. What really happened in 1971? That he, that he was honored, Yogi Bhajan was honored at the Akal Tucket is beyond doubt, thanks to Mr. Singh. We have the pictures to prove it. But what honor was given? He was similarly honored in 1974. Everyone seems to agree with that. Upon that meaning, Yogi Bhajan was honored in 1974. Everyone seems to agree on that. Upon that second occasion, he was given the title of Bhai Saab in 1971. There was no one on that trip who could speak Punjabi other than YB himself. Since I can assume with close to absolute certainty that the ceremony was conducted in Punjabi, the only source who told the group, if indeed they ever were ever even told that the Sri Sinsab title was given, would have been YB himself. I was around when the Jethadar, when the, when the Jetta left for India in December of 1970, I was around when they returned. No one spoke about any title given to Yogi Bhajan, not even Yogi Bhajan himself. Now, Anchon Vikram Singh Meredith, has told me uh, many of these um, stories. And I wanna um, show you, this is um, Anshin Vikram Singh, who um, was uh, part of the Yogi Bhajan group uh, from the early 70s. And um, uh, he is the one who uh, actually, um, met with people who were on this group, traveled to India in 1972, uh, oh, 1970. And um, now Vikram Singh left the Yogi Bhajan group in the early 90s because um, he realized Yogi Bhajan was completely corrupt. And he was the first to, um, play Gurbani Kirtan at the Dabar Saab. So um, he has a lot of respect um, from Sikhs in India and uh, he has my respect as well. Uh, he um, has remained a Sikh and uh, he's uh, within the last few years started to speak out about all of the corruption that happened in the Yogi Bhajan group and all of the abuse. Um, so, uh, he, again, um, he says he says here, I was around when they returned from this 1970 trip. Uh, no one spoke about any title given by Yogi Bhajan. So. I just have to find my place again here. Um, okay, so Vikram Singh has told me that he never heard Yogi Bhajan mention the Sri Singh Saab title until 
perhaps um, 1973. <clears throat> Certainly never in 1972, if he had been given this illustrious title, why not use it immediately? Not conclusive proof, I agree, but again, it points to Yogi Bhajan as the only source of the information that he supposedly received this great honor. Now, the April 1971 Gudwara Gazette, the Gudwara, now the Gudwara Gazette is the official organ of the SGPC. All of its actions are recorded therein. The April 1971 edition has the report on the visit by the Americans to Amritsar. The words Siri Singh Sab are nowhere to be found in this issue. Had there been an official award of the Siri Singh Sab title to Yogi Bhajan, it would certainly have been reported in this magazine. The fact that it was not, sh was not shows that it is almost certain that no such title was given. The SPC proclamation that was missing a word. Now, former uh, Vikram Singh, and by the way, he was given this Mukia Singh Sab title by Yogi Bhajan, um, and, and then he re uh, later relinquished it uh, because he realized it was just a fake title. Uh, Vikram Singh happened to be in the Guru Ram Das estate in the late 1970s. By chance, he observed a document that had been left laying on the dining room table. This was a proclamation from the SGPC given, giving YB, Yogi Bhajan, the title of Singh Sab. You will notice that there is adamant, th there he is adamant, that was not, that was what he saw. I have discussed with Vikram Singh, and he is adamant that what this is what he saw. He was quite surprised and looked and looked again and again to make sure that there was no city on the page. Vikram says that he had the idea previously that Yogi Bhajan was making the whole thing up, but he didn't say anything as he didn't want to have his face ripped off. And as so many of us did, continue to go along with the charade. How does it make sense that if the SGPC had clearly given him Yogi Bhajan, the SSS, the Sri Singh Sab title previously, they would issue a proclamation that did not use it. Makes sense. The Yogi Bhajan portrait in the Sikh Museum. Now, I've recently um, been in contact with somebody who uh, works there at the museum. And um, I heard back from them, they've moved the Yogi Bhajan portrait to a more less conspicuous place. They didn't completely take it down evidently. Um, um, but what's important about this uh, portrait of Yogi Bhajan there is that um, this is that main Sikh museum there, that's right next to the Dharvar Sab. It contains the text uh, for Yogi Bhajan's name, Bhai Sab, Bhai Harbhajan Singh Yogi. And uh, let's check that out here. You can see here, now they've moved this painting back to a less conspicuous place of the Sikh Museum because of all of these accounts of sexual abuse, they should have removed it. Um, you know, but um, the point here is, is that um, you can see here that there's no Siri Singh Saab in the, um, uh, the plaque, if you will, of the, um, under the, beneath the portrait. Um, you'd think that if the SGPC gave Yogi Bhajan a title like Siri Singh Saab, they'd proudly display it under Yogi Bhajan's portrait for the world to see in the main Sikh museum. There are pictures attached to prove this, and I've, I'm showing you this right now. The mystery of the unprecedented title, Siri Sitab, which was eagerly embraced by the Bhajanists, the Yogi Bhajan followers, and still is promoted by Sikh Nat and by uh, Grafata Singh, yet almost never used by the Punjabis, in particular the SJPC. I believe it was self-bestowed and I will continue to do so until I am shown otherwise. So Yogi Bhajan, imposed, you know, he gave this title to himself. Someone recently posted that they thought YB was brave. 
I think that a better word what would be chutzpah from Wikipedia, chutzpah, is the quality of audacity for good or for bad, but it is generally used positively. The Yiddish word derives from the Hebrew word, audacious. The modern English usage of the word was taken in a broader meaning, having been popularized through vernacular use. The word has also been able to interpret as the meaning of the amount of spunk or ability that an individual has. So do I think that Yogi Bhajan would have had the chutzpah to shamelessly propagate his, this Sri Singh Sab myth for so long? Absolutely. We could go on and on about the Mahan Tantric, Lama Lila Pod, and all the other lies um, about Yogi Bhajan's form of Kundalini Yoga being an ancient science. The point is that we are looking at someone who seemed to have no hesitation, falsifying qualifications in order to make himself appear grand, grander to the world. All right, so there you have it. All the proof, conclusive proof about why there was never a Sri Sab title and Yogi Bhajan made it up in order to promote his Kundalini and Tantric Yoga and why Sikhnet and the Yogi Bhajan followers continue to use this um, false title in order to prop themselves up as being um, more elevated or more spiritual than other people in order to get your money and to get power and influence over others. Well, that concludes the video and I thank you for your time. Why Gajika Kalasa? Why Gajiki Fateh?